Luc Chenin Blanc. They had worked that already into a very quality wine. As you know, it, I don't have to tell secrets, there was a, a, a big <laughs> separation between the boys and uh, there were different ideas. One was more for size, one was more for quality. So in 1966, they separated Peter and Bob and uh, Bob felt he had enough time, enough energy, maybe some sons that were going to follow the dynasty, to maybe some knowledge to do his own thing, and he built the Robert Mondavi Winery. Uh, it was a very first winery built after prohibition, so, and, it, it, and Bob went for everything he could do to make this uh, a new winery. So he got, you know, stainless steel tanks for fermenters. He got the sites company to do all the filters and stuff like that. Buche Guyer for the presses. French barrels for the aging. And the beautiful architect Cliff May to build the wine. With this idea, he never said better, but he could produce wine that would be in the company of the great wines of the world. And he looked also at the land. And I think this region here, Oakville, definitely would be the first growth of land. So that's how he started. Uh, I, on the other hand, started to work at Charles Coop as a lowly tour guide, the first female that they allowed in there to do anything. <laughs> I'm the macho world, believe me, that might be. I worked for two dollars an hour and when it rained I was sent home. Uh, I loved the business so much. I had so I started sort of with some volunteer work for some other things. Well, anyway, and then uh, when I was there about two and a half years, and every day when I came to work, we had to hang our coats in the, in the garage. The men stopped talking. All the others were men. They had stopped talking because they talked about me. <laughs> 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 Since when does a woman know anything about wine, right? And I had to, really, it was a challenge. And I started to read books, and I started to become a member of the St. Helena library, wine library, and some extension code. And after about six months, I said, I know as much as they do. What are they doing to me? But anyway, I had also my, sometimes, to really come with what they call in German Schadenfreude. <laughs> so it was interesting, but then uh, about two and a half years into this, uh, the, the boys split, the spirit was gone, although I never knew Robert Mondavi when I was a child's school. I didn't know Peter either. They were kind of on an echelon making wine and selling wine, but while we were giving tours. I also then got to know the mother. She waited for me in the morning when I came to work. I was the only one she could talk to because I speak Italian. So it was a, really a wonderful introductory time. I came here because I left Charles School. You know, I mean, it wasn't that big a job. <laughs> <laughs> and I started to paint again. And one day, a little group called North by Artists went out there there was a marvelous water tower we took out our palette and painted this scene. By the way, the scene hasn't changed. It looks just like that then. Maybe behind the trees there may be some houses, but in general it was the hill. And looked around, I said, there's something going on. Still in steps, I think there was an arch and so we walked over and the gentleman that used to work in Charles Cook. Here, Mr. Griswold came out and said, Margaret, come on in, I want to show you. Robert Mondavi's building a winery. And, by the way, would you like to work for us? I need help. We're going to open this fall. Mm -hmm. Why do we? Well, you can be a tour guide again. So I realized how much I missed the wine world. And I started at, in, on November 3rd, 1967. My employment day goes back making two dollars an hour. Being the only female, because all those lazy guys from up there came down. <laughs> <laughs> they were retired firemen, retired policemen, retired teachers, making two dollars an hour, and uh, we started here. And it was so much fun. 
And this is where I got to know Robert Mondavi because he was everywhere. He wanted to see how the walls were built. He went in the cellar in the morning to see how the wine was made. He picked up the pumice and ate it and said, uh-uh. He, he was everywhere. And also, at that time, you know, it's different times, uh, the little group of us, when we were two at the tasting, and we had just a chain that we put out there on the gate. Before we put the chain up, we came together and we had a glass of wine. Nobody thought this was wrong. Well, a glass of wine before you go home. There was always some left over. So there Robert came and he was always full of dreams, full of passions, what he was going to do. And I had some ideas too, and he was usually the guy that would listen to the ideas and then say, look, if it's good, don't talk about it. Do it. And supported me very much. So I had this idea first of a little music festival. And I said, look, you've got this beautiful lawn and the arch could be a background. Can you have a little music? He said, oh, it can't cost anything. I don't know, I'll fix it. And we bought some chairs from the church, got the stage from the high school, I got some mu musicians from the Napa Valley Symphony, put a little group together, and now we had to advertise. When we made posters, there was no French laundry or restaurants in Napa Valley. <laughs> the road from Highway 29 into Yountville was dirt. Mm -hmm. There were 21 bars in Yountville. <laughs> At that time, by federal law, you could not sell alcohol in a radio that was less than a mile and a half from the veterans' home. And all these veterans wanted to have drinks. So one bar after another popped up, and they were always down there. Napa had one taxi cab, Yountville had 10. Up and down they went for their little drinks. So anyway, a year later they were sent to law, but when I came, that was still Yountville. So anyway, we had also not that many guests that came. As a matter of fact, Michael Mandavi said that sometimes he came down the road and made a very visible big left turn and hoped some cars would follow him so they would just come into the wine. He always said 1967 was the worst vintage year that you can imagine. It rained for seven months. Rained all winter, rained all spring. And we said one day nobody would come. But the lowest we ever hit was two people. We never made the zero. So we went out there and we told the story. We didn't have the wines yet because we just had white wines, you know, the red ones were being made. So we, at that time, we made Riesling and Tramine and Fumé Blanc, which of course was our signature wine. And then by next May, the Gamay came up. And we also made a wonderful Gamay Rosé. It looked like a dream. That 1.5 residual sugar and was delicious. Anyway, we did. This, we, we told this story and people kept coming. And every winemaker in the world finally came because they heard about a new winery. Where in France did they have stainless steel tanks? Did they have all this equipment and this spirit? Robert really spent his day all day long talking about it. And he would always grab bottles out of that closet. Was it a Margot, a Lafitte, a Latour, a Brion? He had always a wine to compare. And he said, you tell me that we can make wine as good. <laughs> Never said that as good. And it permeated. So then, with the summer festival, when we started with this little thing, we charged $2.50. And 400 people came to this one. So I had $1,000 in a shoebox. Nobody had credit card said it was all cash. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and wine was free. We served wine out there. We were, well, we didn't know what we were doing anyway. And <laughs> Rouge and Noir cheese brought cheese. So we had, the music was nice. And I had now $1,000 for next year. And so I was able then to get Calchate, a great jazz band, uh, Preservation Hall from New Orleans, and Vince Ferrari from uh, Peanuts for $300, $350 each down payment. We took our chats, you know, on this festival. Well, we again made the posters by hand and brought them to the schools and the garage. People started to talk about it. 2,000 people didn't know what to do. And we then charged $3.
<laughs> now I had so much money for next year I could get Ella Fitzgerald, Benny Goodman, ah. Lena Horn, and the festival. Well, the idea was uh, Robert that said, you know, wine belongs with eyes. How nice it is to have a glass of wine while you listen to the music. And the people immediately grabbed the chairs and put them under the walkway and sat on the grass. And of course, this was now the late 60s, the beginning of the 70s. There was a little blue smoke all over. Yeah. Everybody had a great time. And they couldn't wait. They actually said that they did arrange their vacations according to our summer festival schedule because it was so much fun. So that's how the summer festival started. Well, then we built the vineyard. Well, the walls were kind of empty, and I said, Robert, can I bring some pictures? I know artists, everybody wants to hang their pictures. He said, don't talk about it, do it. <laughs> so then we changed artists at the time, every month, now we do every two months. We started with Richard Liebenkorn, great artists have shown here, believe me, we in Tivo three times and so forth. So that too, you give a vernissage, an opening, a glass of wine, talk about art, people are happy, it worked well. Very fortunate, 1976, two hapless fellows came into my office and had sort of a cooking school for sale. I'm not going to give you the details, but we bought that one too. And so the great chefs of France were created because at that time we didn't have the system of making stars out of chefs. You like in France, Paul Bocuse, uh, Gérard, uh, the Trois Gros Brothers, and so forth, Marc Menon, they are great names and they make stars out of them. So we imported these French chefs, all three star Michelin chefs, and they had no idea about California or California wines. Usually have people live in California. You know. They loved our wines, they loved being here, they prepared their great things. Schools were about a week long. People couldn't wait for the new brochures. It was quite successful. What happened then was this, all these chefs, all of them, brought our wines back to their restaurants. I know we were at the last, last page and we were the last item, but we were there. That's Robert Mondavi still today. When I go back to Europe, or maybe to Japan or to Asia, they may not know Napa well, but the name Robert Mondavi is there because he was always present, always positive, always generous. His generosity of spirit was another thing, as you know our involvement with the University of California at Davis, that he started Copia, that he did many things in that, and many things for the vintners. At that time, 1966, 1967, we were 21 winers. Now people started to come and look at this lovely valley and say, maybe we too can build a wine. You know, the first ones may have been Schrambersburg and, and Tibetan and so on. And they always came to Bob. And he had advice for everyone. He wanted to help everyone. Competition? No competition. The more good wine that comes out of Napa Valley, the better it is for me. You need a lot of grapes, you need a truck, you need some money, he was there. And the witness have them forgotten. So with that, I still think that his spirit is in every glass of wine. And uh, I'd like to toast you with yes. this idea. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. And then, <laughs> of course, have a sip of our Moscato d'Oro. This is the last thing I'm going to say because the Moscato d'Oro should be drunk and it will be cold, almost frozen. Because when Robert made the joint venture for Opus One, he met Baron de Philippe de Rothschild in Bordeaux, finally, this was 1978, and he always tells about that dinner that where a 35-year-old Mouton was served with the first course, a 100-year-old with the second course, and for the dessert there was a 47 Chateau Yquem that came frozen, and Bob said, Baron, why do you serve it like this? And he says, I like it this way. So Bob liked it's it always good. cold, and we've had cold wine ever since.